Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Eurovision Backstage. I'm actually not technically backstage, I'm actually underneath the audience right now. And if you're wondering, hey, why does this look similar to the green room? Well, we spoke to Alfredo and you're going to find out more about that very green, green room. Last week, we promised you to find out more about the very, very green room. And now next to me is one of the head designers, Alfredo. So would you mind telling me the story about how you guys designed and made this space? I'm Alfredo De Luca, and I'm one of the set designers of the studio atelier Francesca Montinaro. And we are in our wonderful green room. Basically, the story of this place, everything starts from a seed. Because while we were designing the scene, one of my colleagues, Daniele Voci, he planted a seed of avocado and this thing started growing. And that was the seed of the green room of all the set design as well. Then Francesca was walking around the city, around Rome, and Rome is full of historical gardens and uh, the idea just came up. We wanted to, to bring inside the venue the nature with real nature elements. The main reference, as uh, you were saying, is the Italian garden. Italian garden is exactly what, uh, what I was describing before, so the nature that is somehow turned into architecture. This is the main idea uh, behind the Italian garden, because you make architecture with uh, precise and exact shapes out of plants. All the plants that you see, they are real, as I was saying before. They come from Pistoia, this, is, this, this wonderful city in Tuscany, where for some reason plants grow amazing. The city is famous for growing plants and they deliver plants everywhere in the world, so of course we wanted the best and we made these plants come from over the place. In fact, some of the pieces that you see around the green room, since they are real, it, they take a, a, a long time to grow. We have some pieces that have like they are 15, 20 years old and this is something that is very interesting to me. Um, so I, I wanted to ask you about the fountain. So is it like a big tank or how do you guys make, make the fountain? Because it's actually illegal normally to have water at Eurovision. The fountain with the waterfall, it's a closed system. So uh, once at the beginning we brought two huge water tanks just outside behind the backstage and fill it up in order to make it work and there are pumps that work and make it recirculate continuously so we have this architecture made of plants and eventually on the horizon you see a water feature a water game that gives movement because one of the idea behind the Italian garden is an architecture that moves that looks like a theater it's like a scenography and on the other side we wanted to surround the stage with water as if it was a sea so the theme of the power of water continues here in Italy as well, as we had last year in Rotterdam. Thank you so much, Alfredo. Thank you, Samia. And enjoy your vision. Bye, guys. Bye. I'm here with Chanel from Spain. Hello. España llegó. How are you doing? Very good, very good. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. So your song is in English and Spanish, and it's really easy to sing along to, but pronouncing it can be quite hard. Mm -hmm. So would you mind teaching us how to pronounce the chorus properly for the Spanish bits? Okay, you have to say, Y si aún no me creen, Y si aún no me creen, Yeah! Pues me toca, Pues me toca, Mostrárselo, Mostrárselo? Yeah, mostrárselo. Mostrárselo. Yeah. With like an R. Yeah, mostrárselo. Mostrárselo. Yeah, but when you sing it like, mostrárselo. Mostrárselo. Like yeah. you throw it away. You yeah. throw the R. But you know it's there. Like yeah. that air. That to touch it a little bit. Yeah. Mostrárselo. And then, take a video, watch it slow mo. Take a video, watch it slow mo. Well, yeah. that's the easy <laughs> Thank you so much. And I hope you guys enjoy singing along with slow mo. Thank you. Bye. Hi, I'm Giulia, I'm Highland Delegation Host and my Italian word for today is commentatore, which means commentator. I am here next to one of the expert commentators for the Spanish Eurovision broadcast, Vic. Hiya. Hello, how are you doing? I'm good. So you have a very, very long Eurovision history. Would you mind, in short, explaining to us how long you've been here? So this is going to be my 26th year in the Eurovision Song Incredible. Contest. Yes. And I have been doing many, many things. Uh, but for the past 12 years, I have uh, been doing a part of the commentary for, for Spain, writing the script of the three commentators and being a part of it also live in the, in the shows. Any question I have about Eurovision, I can ask you when you have an answer. Eurovision 76, who was the winner? 
It was the United Kingdom with Brotherhood of Man and Save Your Kisses for Me. Who was fifth in 2006? Uh, in 2006, fifth was Sweden with Carola and Invincible. See, that's why they ask you every single year, don't they? It is. It's, it's all in here. Don't ask me why. We are pretty high up right now, but we really want to see the inside of the booth, don't we? So would you mind taking us inside? Yes, would you like to come? Yes, please. I think this job is so cool. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, push, 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 push. It looks rather dark, as you can see, because they ask us uh, from the production to not turn the main light uh, during the show because it can, you know, affect uh, the light in the cameras, etc. So now that there is no show going on, <laughs> we can actually turn it on so you can have a look at everything we need in the commentary booth. So you are with three for the Spanish broadcast, but some countries have like one or two. So it differs, right? It differs, yeah. Um, I remember when I started doing this in 2010, when I only had one colleague and he was the only one speaking. Uh, so I guess that even if there is only one, there's always usually assistant. Uh, there's one assistant with, with them. Uh, but yeah, then it's not a dialogue. It's more like just a monologue and you have to say everything yourself. Uh, but it, it works in the same way, I think. It's like a sauna in here, isn't it? It is. That's why we have the aircon. But you know what? Aircon is not the best friend of the... Oh, your voice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm also in control of that. <laughs> Every single button you see yes. is Vic's button. Yeah. And I was just told by my colleagues that the best thing is to try to keep it around 25 degrees. So this is my job. Checking it every two songs <laughs> to see if hats gone up or down so now I can actually put it down one because we need to <laughs> take it down one degree the things you need to think about during a live broadcast are more than just making jokes and it's making of giving more information about the artist <laughs> you see the show from here and then is there like a latency for people at home or do you basically just speak and then the Spanish TV hears you uh, well we are uh, actually in contact with them uh, there is here one of these buttons which is uh, assistant and coordination okay this is when we hear the people from the assistant uh, from here in, in on site which are the people of the company that provides the the machinery and stuff and cord which is the coordination from Madrid at the same time making sure that everything is going on for example imagine I forget to press this button then no one would hear what she is saying yeah <laughs> okay and maybe I get a message from here telling me the microphone was off, turn it on. <laughs> so then Madrid is like, we don't hear you push the button. And you're like, oh, no, no, okay. Fine. Exactly. And just in case, we also have a, a WhatsApp group. <laughs> so we are in, in contact with them all the time. So the Eurovision commentary survives on good air conditioning, loads of buttons and a WhatsApp group. Indeed. And a really good script <laughs> written by Vic. <laughs> <laughs> so please have fun. You, have, you did the first semi, now you have the second semi and then the final. Yeah, now it's getting super exciting and can't wait for the shows. I mean, it's easy for you because your country is always in the final, isn't it? That's true, but we live it with the same excitement, even if we're not taking part in the semi-finals. So we try to also uh, bring this idea and emotion to our viewers at home. Thank you so much, Vic, and good luck. And we'll remember to press the button. I mean, you've done it for so many years. Yeah, It'll yeah, be fine. Yeah. That, is, that is the number one thing I should never forget. <laughs> press the red button. Exactly. I hope we don't jinx it and now I forget it. So. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Hi, it's me Andromachi. I'm representing Cyprus and you're watching Eurovision Backstage. Y eso es todo por hoy. Muchas gracias por acompañarnos. Thank you so much again for watching as always. We will see you tomorrow. Hasta mañana. Bye bye.